Welcome to another Flight Club YouTube bourbon review. I'm Scott Hill from FlightClubIC2.com, and I'm joined with two guests. One of them is a special guest. One of them is a not-so-special guest. Uh, let's start with some introductions. Not-so-special guest, Jamie, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Uh, Jamie Ballman, Flight Club ICT. Um, and then with us is Ryan, uh, sorry, is our special guest this evening. Ryan? Hey, guys. How are you all? Thanks for having me. Thanks for thanks for being with us. You're a uh, you're a bit of a uh, Instagram celebrity uh, here. So we're, uh, we're 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 glad to have you uh, on board. G give us you know we're not I'm not I'm not doing an interview here. This isn't an interview show. But uh, to give us give me give us like 15 seconds about you. You grew yeah. up there in Lawrenceburg. Kind of tell us a little bit about you. Yep. I'm uh, originally born in South Carolina, Charleston, South Carolina. My dad was a, a Navy in the Navy, so I was a born out there when he was on the submarine but my whole family's from kentucky so moved back to lawrenceburg you know i was a couple two or three years old and been here ever since um big wild turkey fan obviously um big four roses fan so if it was made here um you know we've been drinking it long before we probably should have so well uh, you know wild turkey is exactly why we we've got you on here uh, we're we are recording this a little bit early, but uh, we're getting very close to uh, November, which is our Wild Turkey Month, uh, and we're, we're we're glad to be able to share uh, Wild Turkey Month with you. And uh, we're pretty excited that November's coming up, and uh, we're going to dedicate the, the whole month to some reviews. So uh, yeah. this will be coming, this will be coming live here in uh, in November. So thanks thanks for being on. Thanks for I'm probably a big fan of you guys. A big fan of the of the Turkey Months you guys have done previously, the videos previously. So. Excited to be on. It's getting harder and harder. We're having to get uh, <laughs> we're having to get pretty narrow on some of yeah. these. But uh, so we're we're here today. We've got uh, uh, three different uh, bourbons that we want to review. Uh, I'm the guy with a couple of the bottles. So let's uh, let's talk. But we're going to start with uh, Bond and Lillard Batch Two. Um, Jamie, you're supposed to do your homework. Are you prepared to talk about Bond and Lillard to give us about a 30 minute uh, essay here on Bond and Lillard? No, not, not even remotely. I bet Ryan can fill us in more than I ever could because I don't, I, I don't have anything, man. Well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll save us all here because this isn't the time where we want to get into a history lesson. You can, you can read about that over on our blog if you want to read about that. But uh, what do we need to know about this? Is sort of the basics. It's a I think it's a seven year, what I've been reading about it, uh, 100 proof. Uh, this is batch two, batch one would have come out. Ryan, do you remember how long ago that's been? A year and a half ago, maybe? Uh, yeah, either that or more even, maybe. It's It's been about that at least, yeah. Yeah, the word, the word is that Eddie did help with this one. Yeah, and And with the next, our next one, Saffle, so. Yeah, that was that was the whole rub on on the first two of these. We had Bond and Lillard batch one, uh, and then we had the old Rippy bottle that we yeah, it probably has been two years ago or so because we did review these when they when they came out. Um, and you know the the rub was that uh, they came out of uh, Wild Turkey, but the but the key players didn't have a lot of involvement with it. So um, we'll see if if their involvement here on batch two maybe makes this one a little bit. Uh, more palatable, but we'll take a look at it here in a second. And then Jamie launched in already to uh, um, uh, the second bottle that we have today, uh, WB Saffle. Uh, what do we what do we know about this? Either one of you guys? Um, unofficially, officially, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a, a blend of six, eight, ten, and twelve year old, sort of similar to rare breed, or um, I think it's uh, again like a rare breed and a Russell's ten. 10 year mix type of deal. Um, again, unofficially, officially, I guess. And we're thinking mostly Camp Nelson on that one, right? Yeah, that's what I've kind of uh, understood. That's kind of what my nose tells me too when we get into this. This was 107 proof. Uh, interestingly, I think the old Rippy was also a blend of, you know, 6, 8, 12 is sort of what I was reading about it. So uh, a similar blend, but, um, you know, this one I think does have some of the Camp Nelson in it. It comes across very different, at least in my experience. Also described as batch one. So if you're watching this a few years down the road and they decide to come out with a batch two, uh, there may be some differences in that. Uh, let's hold bottle number three. We're going to hold that one for a bit. Let's go ahead and jump in here, maybe to the Bond and Lillard, uh, get some notes going on it, and then we'll, we'll get to the third one when it's when it's time. So uh, it, feel free to start nosing and uh, throw out some notes as you guys come up with them.
I can't tell if it's more stone fruit or grape that I'm getting on that. There's a, there's definitely a sweetness there. Um, it, it's, it's beyond just a, a, a caramel sweetness uh, it gets to, the, to the fruitiness, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's a little bit floral, a little bit vanilla for me. It's, it's a, it's a pretty well balanced nose. that just doesn't completely pop out of the glass. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of where I've been. I'm just in those classic notes, the caramels, vanillas, but it's a little light. Um, I feel like it's not, like you said, kind of jumping out at me a little buttery, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's not something that's overly complex, uh, a little sweetness. I don't know that I'm getting as much fruit as you guys maybe, but um, definitely those classic notes. There's almost yeah. like a, like a fair, fair ground caramel corn. Yeah. That's what it kind of reminds me of like a, like a buttery sauce or a buttery popcorn type of deal. There's, there's a lighter pepperiness to it as well. Uh, not as robust as, as many of the, the, the turkey products, but um, it's, it's, to, to me, this has a, a, a pretty wild turkey nose to it. This it mm. doesn't at all surprise me that this comes from from wild turkey. I don't find anything that I don't like, other than its lightness. No. Yeah, other than it's it's just not you know overwhelming or anything. Yeah, a little bit of herbalness in there, but I, you're right. I think it's sort of these traditional notes that uh, that we're all kind of expecting to hear. Uh, should we taste? Sure. Cheers, guys. I feel the sweetness and the heat really do ramp up after the mm. the, the first hit on the palate. Um, it, it gets pretty sweet, um, a fair amount of sweetness on there, but at the same time, it's balanced out by, by quite a bit of heat, a little bit of baking spice, a little bit of pepper, uh, but the, the sugar, the sugar sweetness on it seems pretty uh, simple to me. Uh, not a lot, not a lot going on there with the sweetness. What did you say the proof on this is? It's hundred proof. proof. Hundred proof. I was gonna say, man, it's so wild turkey one hundred and one. It's <laughs> we we just did the other ones, uh, you know, the other night, and it's a lot like that uh, L L G H that we did. Yeah, twenty eighteen. I guess yeah, to be twenty eighteen. Which, if if that's later in the reviews, then spoiler alert. But the um, I think it definitely takes a step up from the nose for me. Um, and I think, I, but I think Scott's right. It's a sort of a not a generic sweetness, but maybe just like um, you're talking about like a sugary. And I've kind of always thought it was um, sort of like one of those uh, generic cupcake frosting type things, like one of those very basic vanilla store bought tins of cupcake frosting. Do, do I remember this one? Do you guys remember this one being like a, a charcoal filtered product? Uh, do you guys remember that on the Bond and Lillard? I was looking on the bottle and I wasn't seeing that. Um, but but it feels to me like something stripped out of this. Mm -hmm. um, but there was something else there. Certainly a, a mouth feel that may have been there at one time that I think is is lacking a little bit. Um, and and I think it just it's has toned down spice and fruit character that I would expect it at a hundred proof. I, I feel like I get a little bit more out of, a, you know, standard 101 on sort, sort of that boldness than I get out of this at a hundred proof. I agree. I mean, it's good, but again, it's just real light. Yeah. Um, it's got the boldness right there at the right when it hits your, hits your tongue, like right at the beginning. And then it's a pretty sharp drop off for me. Um, I don't know that it's, I don't think they've come out and said publicly whether they've chill filtered these or not. I've heard though that, that Saffle, uh, which we'll talk about next was not chill filtered. I've never heard anything about the bond and liver stuff though. I'm really starting to get a little bit more character on the finish. Uh, some dry Oak, 
um, there's a little bit of a, a tannin that comes across on the finish and gives me a little bit of a bitterness. Uh, that's, that's not a that's not a bad offset to some of the sweetness that you're getting on the palate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, you're kind of talking to like it's a nice little um, you know direction for it to take. Um, yeah, what's, no, I, don't, uh, I don't mind that at all. What's MSRP on this one? Uh, I think they're all about fifty for a three seventy five reminder. Yeah, for a three seventy five. Yeah. This. I mean, I'm going to say this guy's lacking. <laughs> I don't disagree with that at all. I mean, I think this one, you know, we're, we're kind of jumping around here where we might give some scores and values and that sort of thing. But this one hits well below its mark at, at a hundred dollar yeah. bottle. Um, it, it, it's, it, it's a, a decent pour, uh, but it's not one that I would reach to very often. Um, it frankly wasn't one that I was super excited about going out and buying, having tried batch one. Yeah, um, I'm glad we made you do that one. Similar reaction. Yeah, I have a similar reaction to batch one. Um, wasn't very excited to go out and buy this one, but it, it was an interesting. I, I was chatting to you guys be, beforehand that, that I did have an opportunity a couple weeks ago to, to sit down with batch one and batch two side by side and maybe take a little bit more kind of in-depth notes. And while the two of them are similar and, and why I think two is an improvement over one you know they're 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 pretty close to the same and uh um it it, it didn't it didn't uh strengthen as much as i would hope to on batch two yeah i agree any other notes that you guys are catching on that on that finish i i i don't have anything other than i mean i agree it's like wild turkey 101 yet they took something out of it but it, it is a little sweeter. It's a little sweeter, and, and mm -hmm. there is some level of refinement to this over a standard 101 that, you know, we talked about 6, 8, 10, 12 year kind of blended in, and that's maybe where I'm getting some of those tannins on the end. Uh, it, it is a little bit more rounded than sort of, you know, standard 101 can be perceived as somewhat abrasive to some people. It's bold. It's, you know, it's spicy. It's, um, you know, some of those flavors hit really hard. This is toned down from that. Some people may enjoy that if they're not a big fan of sort of that boldness of a standard 101. But for for us, I think who really enjoy that profile, I think this is this is lacking. Yeah, again, it has just a hint of it right on the mouth for the beginning of the mouthfeel, but then it kind of falls off and it it does veer into the more sweeter sweeter notes and sweeter category than a, a typical 101. So Ryan, you may be a, a bit familiar with our scoring system. We have a five-point scale, and you know a, a three uh, is satisfying. A three is a is a good score in our mind. Uh, it's what we would expect. Um, nothing uh, exceptional, but nothing that we want to to turn our nose at either. Uh, Jamie, we'll let you lead off so we're with some scores. We typically go uh, nose, palate, finish. Jamie hates that we do the palate finish separate. Uh, I know I'm going to take that from you before you say it, uh, and then we'll kind of get some overall scores, and we can finally hit on that value. So why don't we just start with nose and kind of head back to that and kind of give me your thoughts there on the score. I'm going to add um, vanilla cake to the notes before I give you my scores. Um, but it's like it's like a birthday cake, that not, not chocolate, like vanilla, but um, nose, two and a half. Palette two and a half, finish two. Ryan, what's your reaction to that? I'm, where, where I'm exactly, play? I've got it written down right now. Two and a half, two and a half, two. Um, yeah. The finish is where it, it really lacks for me. It's pretty short for me. I don't disagree with those scores. I, I think our overall evaluation, while we kind of score the, the palette and the nose the same, I think – there's a little bit of an uptick there to the palate than the than the nose, but it it drops off pretty hard. This is not what I would want in a finish. Uh, I mean, it's not offensive, but just it's it's not something that really is is satisfying to me. I, I'm I'm good with those scores. Um, it would may be interesting to go back and compare the scores that we had with the original because these may score a little bit lower, but I think our expectations may be just a little bit slightly higher now. 
Um, and, and I think if I were to go back to, to batch one, I may be a little bit more critical than I originally was on it. What I, do you I think, I think my biggest problem with Bond and Lillard, I, I mean, if this was the same price as Wild Turkey 101, I would certainly pick it up. And it, it's it's interesting. It's different than, than their typical 101. And on some nights, like you said, where you don't, where you just want something easier to drink, because you come home and uh, the first thing you do, you, you don't always want that harsh 101. Sometimes a smooth drink is nice. And I could even see putting this in the fridge and having it on a summer day or something. It'd be, it'd be good cold. But um, yeah, again, the only problem I got with this is the price point. Yeah, there's not very many people that I hear describing their love of wild turkey and ever using the word smooth or or, or light or easy drinking. And so it's, it, you know, maybe there's a little bit of a different audience that that might appreciate this than the standard wild turkey fan. So, yeah, yeah totally agree. I, I still say give it a try. I mean, <clears throat> but uh, so are we two and a half overall, probably? I think that's where I fall is, is is probably a two and a half overall. I know the 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 no or the uh, the finish does fall a little bit from there, but I'd be have a hard time saying I'm all, all the way down to a two on the on the total experience. Agreed. I've I've got two and a half written down um, as far as overall goes. Yeah. Now we now we uh, now we slap I'll let hard else the face. Do the value. <laughs> <laughs> Um, this is, this is a tough one. I mean, it's, uh, I know prices are creeping up, but a uh, hundred dollars to me for a seven fifty. I know it's 50 for three seventy five, And for that, for that fact that they're selling it at half the size and you don't have to shell out a hundred bucks, it may be a good thing. Uh, but what do you guys think, you know, at that hundred dollar price range for a seven fifty, so we can kind of compare apples to apples. Uh, Ryan, where do you think you're at on that? Um, I'm definitely below a two. I, I sort of did a sliding one, one and a half to two. Um, so it, it's very tough for me. Um, I don't even know what price it would be good at for a 750. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> not, you know, if it was, uh, it's, it's better than something that's, you know, $14 for a 750, but, um, yeah, I'm probably at the one and a half, one seven five scale. I, I think the problem is, is we're comparing it to wild Turkey. As yeah. opposed to comparing it to all bourbon, um, if you compare it to wild turkey and the value that you get in their stuff and all of their stuff across the board, um, I think it ranks really low. I'd, I'd give it a two. I, I, I'm less than satisfied at the price point. Yeah, I, I could swing either way on the on the one and a half or the two. Um, I, you know, I don't care what the what the manufacturer is or who the manufacturer is, but you know, just blending up some six, eight, ten, and twelve, slapping a hundred dollar price tag on. I'm not saying uh, Campari did it that simply, but uh, it just doesn't have the stats to me at a hundred proof uh, with that sort of blend. Um, well, uh, seven year, not six, eight, and ten, twelve, but uh, seven year. It, it just doesn't have the stats um, uh, th that make me very excited about it at at a hundred dollars. So, at probably a two is probably where I'm at. Yeah, I think the the proof is in that um, I have one bottle, um, and I opened it solely solely for this. Uh, <laughs> you know, like that. I, I think that that says, that says a lot for me where I'm at. So I'm, I'd agree with the two. I'm probably being a little overly harsh on the one five, but I, th I think Jamie's right. Maybe it's the where you're comparing it to, or maybe the expectations, um, especially knowing that this round the Russells were directly involved. Um, and it, where the first one they weren't. Um, so maybe the expectations kind of gave it a little higher ceiling than it could reach. And that's, you know, that's where my, my disappointment comes from, I guess. Um, I'm, I'm, I'd be good with the two though. Um, it's definitely less than satisfying. Uh, you know, I will say uh, we are being pretty critical of this, but I am glad uh, that they're coming out with some of these one-off products. Uh, it's exciting to see what they have to offer. Uh, certainly there's going to be some hits and misses when you do that sort of thing. And uh, maybe this one falls a little bit on the miss side, uh, but let's move over to something that we think may be a little bit more of a hit. Let's go ahead and move over to that 
uh, a, a miss, a miss for seasoned veterans. Uh, I mean, I really okay, think fair. if you're early into yeah. bourbon, give it a whirl. If yeah. you're if you got a deep bunker, you're probably not going to enjoy that. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I want to give them at that at least. I, and I think got, they're in know, someone that'll like it. It's got a cool story that it, you know they're trying to revive these old these old barons of the whiskey industry from back in the day. Uh, you know. If, if anything, it looks great. The, the label's awesome. So yeah, if you're if you're someone that's just getting into it and um, those kinds of things are driving you, um, and I'm not going to hate anybody for that. You know, I'd I'd want you to be interested. Whatever whatever gets you interested uh, is good for good for me. So yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that they pay homage to these these old defunct distilleries, and they do it in a way that's a little bit uh, out of the ordinary of what we see in the bourbon market right now mm -hmm. uh, on, on products like this. I expect to see some backstory that says, Hey, we, you know, we revived grandpa's old recipe and, and we're mm -hmm. part of the family. And uh, this thing's, we have a company that's 150 years old. Uh, so I appreciate it was, that. They it was it. Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I appreciate what they're doing here and, and, uh, that they're that they're being honest about the process and telling some stories without uh, fabricating anything. So, for sure, uh, let's let's move on to let's move on to Saffle. And if you want to learn more about why it's the WB Saffle and, and its relationship uh, uh, there to 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 Lawrenceburg, you know, check out our, our blog and we'll get you some background information in there. But you know, we we hit on this a little bit earlier. Uh, Ryan, you, you mentioned six, eight, 10, 12 year blend, uh, 107 proof. And, and unofficially, Jamie, what was your sort of unofficial? If this is all from Camp Nelson, is that more uh, heavy on the Camp Nelson? Maybe? Heavy, heavy on the Camp Nelson. And uh, I, and for, for background, as far as me, everybody was super excited about this when it first came out and loved it and, and I did not. <laughs> so I, I caught a lot of flack from these two um, amongst many others. So let, let's see if those opinions have changed at all. <laughs> <laughs> let's get into, let's go ahead and get into the notes here and uh, start sharing as you're, as you're picking things up. I, I get maple right away. I mean, that, that maple yep. sweetness, uh, yeah. Maybe some supporting kind of caramel flavors, uh, but it's really, really heavy on maple. It's a, a real rich nose. Um, I uh, and just smelling it, I comparing to the first one, which is not fair, really. But I kind of smile, like you, you can probably see it when you watch this back. Um, the burnt, it's like a burnt sugar, some type of rich, rich syrupy nose yeah it's a, the maple is almost like the aunt jemima like the artificial maple syrup mm -hmm. i could even be talked into like a, a barrel aged maple syrup i'm getting some 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 of the barrel char some of the the oak um yeah if you wanted to get super super hipster and do a, a barrel aged maple <laughs> Well, definitely there, and it is, it's definitely not a simple nose. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got complexity on it. To, I'm, I'm picking up just a, a, a wide range of, of, of baking spices from cinnamon to, uh, to nutmeg. <clears throat> uh, I mean, there's some – you get some sort of head out of the spice cabinet a little bit and more into the herbal notes. I think I'm getting a little bit of ginger on there, a little bit of a faint pepper smell as well. I'm getting that burnt sugar you were talking about, but also like some some cream corn. Is there some citrus there as well? It's, it's citrus, there, but it's like fruit. it's there, but I feel like it's really deep in the glass. Like I've got to really get in there. Um, but I could be talked into some type of like a maybe like a darker red fruit or something. Blood orange is what's coming to my mind, but it's it's deep in there, and, and I'm not sure if that's quite it or not. But it's it's pretty deep in there. I said, I said grapefruit, which is pretty close to blood orange. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah it's good. V vanilla vanilla beans, some custard in there. Um, 
That burnt sugar comes out in spades on the palate and finishes with just loads of caramel. I think this has got the um, what we were what the what the Bond and Lillard started with on that typical <clears throat> wild turkey kind of punch. This one just has way more of it. Um, you know, it's got a um, just it coats your mouth and with that sort of a spiciness um, that they're kind of known for. Uh, call it uh, if it's the the you know like a I white pepper. The, yeah, in the in the um, Maybe in the wild turkey like core fan group or whatever we've called it the Camp Nelson prickle like it's there, um, you know, way more noticeable uh, on the mouthfeel. There, there are times when you pick up a flavor all the way through onto the finish um, <clears throat> that are so bold in a, in a particular area that it, in, it it tells you that it was there before, and you go back and you find it. Uh, pecan pie. Um, after I get through that finish, I'm just getting a ton of pecan pie um, that just sort of increases a little bit in the nose, a little bit more in the palate, and then just uh, really bold into the into the finish. A little other nuttiness on there as well. Almost, yeah. I was going to say, it's really nutty. Yeah, hinting almost at some peanut butter. My initial reaction was like a Reese's peanut butter cup, and then sort of that uh, pecan pie kind of took over for me there on the end. Yeah. I can definitely get that like warm, warm pie out of the oven, that crust, definitely some nuttiness. Yeah. That first one you you struggle to to describe any note. And this one you can call so many things. It's so full of flavor on this. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh I'm I'm, move, I'm moving on to the ship, but I, I still struggle with that. I don't know that I'm gonna let you on, man. <laughs> That's all right. I still got plenty of ruffles. Yeah. A ton of baking spice uh, mm. uh, on this. Um, uh, a little bit of clove there through the pal and the finish. I'm getting a lot of ginger in there as well. Uh, a little bit more herbalness than just sort of that that ginger flavor. I sometimes associate it as much as a spice as as an herbal flavor. Um, but that, that sort of carries the palate all the way through to the finish. I might even be able to talk into some, uh, I writ, wrote down or written down, um, there's like maybe some leather notes, just something that's, um, I don't know, sort of dark and old school about it that reminds me of my grandpa or something. Definitely. And, and for me, it's, it's uh, more on the finish. It just sort of yeah. develops as, as it goes and, yeah, there's definitely some uh, some leather there on the finish. Um, I get some like some cigar wrapper on the on the nose. Yeah, I, I could definitely be talking to some type of tobacco-ish um, leaf wrapper or something like that. Yeah, Jamie, I think I mean I think you said it. I think uh, uh, this has just so many layers of complexity. I think honestly, you could sit here for 30, 45 minutes and just continue to identify flavors uh, that you're getting to this. And that's, I mean, that's a, that's a beautiful experience. Right. I, I think we'll lose all our viewers if we do. <laughs> <laughs> the finish, man. I, I love the finish on this one. It's a, probably a, a good 45 second finish or maybe even a minute. Like it really sticks with you. Um, it's not an abrasive Kentucky hug. Like it's not burning my chest, deep in my chest, but. It's still coating my mouth and my gums. I can still, you know, lick my lips and, and kind of do some stuff, and, and it's still there. Uh, that prickle, especially that Captain Nelson prickle, we call it, and yeah, it's a it's a a big step up in a finish and the finish from the first one. Yeah, that that, that prickle's there, and it has just a mouth coating feeling throughout the mm. whole thing. I mentioned sort of that peanut butter cup, Reese's peanut butter cup before. And while I do get sort of some of those chocolate peanut butter uh, notes throughout the experience, I get more of that just feeling of that, that mouth. Peanut butter in your mouth. Yeah. 
Yeah, it just you, it just like, hangs there. Um, and I need a right. drink of water to like wash it, you know, to get it off. Yeah, that's that's where it, that's what it has. Yeah, you need yeah. a drink of water, but peanut brittle. Like <laughs> <laughs> peanut brittle. It's almost like yeah, you okay. some, you're chewing on some peanut brittle. Yeah, and it's just hanging there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fresh out of the oven, a little warm. Yeah. Well, who's leading this one off? <laughs> I'll lead. Um, I'm, I'm just going to start here with the nose. I'm a solid four on the nose. I, I mean, I think it, it has a lot of complexity to it. Um, the proof is, is spot on for me. The, uh, there's, there's not a lot of burn to it. Uh, you're not overwhelmed by any of those, uh, you know, cinnamon or spice notes or peppery notes. Uh, it just has a lot going on with it. It's just a very pleasing nose. Jamie, I'd I had four as well. Sorry, skip you, Jamie. I had four no, as well no, on, the, on the nose. No, I didn't know if you were going all the way through. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. I'm three and a half, four. You're coming around. I, you guys know that my problem was always the price point, and I I think it's because we're spoiled with so much good Russell's Reserve. But right, we'll see on the next one. I struggle between the palette and the finish on which I enjoy more. And I'm not sure either one of them rises to the four and a half level. For me, a four and a half is, uh, is a very, very good score. Um, you know, there are very few fives out there in my mind. This starts approaching the four and a half. I would say for me personally, I think I like the finish better than the palette, uh, but they're awful darn close to one another. I could probably go four across the board on this, but I could also on the pallet and the finish possibly go up to that kind of four and a half range. Yeah, I agree. I was, I was um, right right now I'm at four across the board, but I think when I, when I was preparing for the, the last one we were going to do, um, I think I'd put the finish at four and a, four and five. And I think I scaled it back to about four across the board. I'm, I'm really happy with that, that score. It's so much sweeter at fresh pour because I just filled it up. And then those darker leathery notes kind of develop as it opens up. Um, so it kind of mutates, which is always fun. But yeah. I know that's a sidebar. Mine um, have been sitting too. Like mine have been sitting for probably a good 15 minutes maybe or something. Like So that could be um, could be a, another one, yeah. But I like that. Um, you know, get it straight, right out of the bottle and you might get something and then you kind of let it. Uh, take a sip and then you kind of work on something else or get distracted and you're like, Oh, I've got some bourbon here. 10 minutes later, you can kind of, uh, that's where it kind of takes you on that, on that train, um, you know, different, different routes. If I were left with that mapley sweetness that you first pick up on the nose that develops into other things, I wouldn't be offended by that in any way. Uh, but how it does develop really, I think draws that score up. Well, and again, that fresh pour, like that maple, really carries all the way through it. But because, like I said, I just filled up. But um, it's interesting and, and ever changing. I, I'm four across the board, four overall. Um, it's a good bourbon. Well, well, you had your admission that uh, you weren't a big fan of this at the beginning. Um, Camp Nelson generally has been one of those that I've been uh, slow to respond to. Um, it just wasn't something that, that initially hit me quite right, or at least the ones that I that I tried. Um, in isolation, some of those have some flavors that, that are a bit off-putting to me, but I feel like I get that Camp Nelson vibe out of this one without having anything be overwhelming or offensive to me. This is, this is one of the best Camp Nelson products I think I've had out there. I'm, I'm a, a, a solid four on this. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, the the Cam Nelson really, I was slow to come around to it too. I mean, a couple bottles that I had, the first couple pours, and last year, I think the couple that we rated last year uh, that Eric and his group picked, I, I think may have been unfair ratings because maybe we just weren't ready for it coming from Wild Turkey B and D and H backgrounds where everything's so sweet. Um, but 
man, I really enjoy the Camp Nelson stuff. Uh, some of the recent ones I finished were Camp Nelson A even, which isn't most people's favorite, but you find a good one, they're great. But I do think that they they offer, and, and I've had plenty of other Russells that I think if you want to call it off profile, I don't really like to say that because what does that really mean? But um, <laughs> there there are things that you do find in Camp Nelson's that you don't find out, like that you were talking about. I've had some that there's just something about them that I've never found in a Russell's pick, and I think a lot of people were finding that, and so maybe it wasn't uh, as appealing um, as what they were used to. But um, they've come around a lot, and you know, the Fs especially, um, you know, that's kind of been the what's been available for, for picks um, you know, the last year, over a year. Um, the A's, I'm still not even super fond of, not found one that I've absolutely loved, um, even tasting it right out of the barrel. I've not, you know, kind of been in love with any of them. But um, this one, and I don't know, again, I don't know how much Cam Nelson's in it, but it seems to be less off profile than what I've found in some of the other offerings from there. Um, a little more classic turkey, but uh, which is you know pleasant. Yeah, I think it's it's a good uh, a good mixture of the two um, profiles, if you will. I and mean, nothing's really off profile. You're, you're exactly right on that. Um, but it's a good mixture of the two, and and would be a, serve as a really good introduction for a lot of people yeah. who are that Camp Nelson profile. So I'm four four across the board. It sounds like we were maybe all in this kind of same place on the on the overall score. Uh, get getting back to value, uh, fifty dollars or so a bottle. I, I, in our market, they held pretty strong at forty five. Now uh, keep in mind, let me let me let me say this: when um, Old Rippy and Bond and Lillard came out, batch one came out. Those did not come to Kansas, as I understand it. So we did not have a local market on those. But everything that came out the second round with the Bond and Lillard Batch 2 and the Saffle seemed to have a pretty fair market price around here of about $45. Is that what you were seeing as well, uh, Jamie? Um, yeah, that's what, what I saw, them, you know, after we, we bought ours elsewhere and <laughs> never paid for them. But, uh, yeah, uh, I think there's still some on the shelves around here at 45 so. That's a, I've seen them both. I've seen them on the higher end. Um, I think the highest I've seen was 56. And then the lowest I've seen was 42. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, uh, but uh, I feel like for the most part, it's in that 49 to 50 range. Okay, who's getting, who's getting the facts? <laughs> I think the wife is uh, is looking for light fixtures, so um, <laughs> which is always That's good. Awesome. I can't wait to see how much this is going to cost that was me. Your, uh, your dial-up internet. <laughs> that old, old no, school that, AOL my, internet. That's the sound of my money going out the yeah. door right there. <laughs> Fucking throwing it. <clears throat> So okay, so we're forty-five, fifty around that range on on price, uh, which puts us, you know, in that uh, ninety to a hundred in in an overall seven fifty comparison sort of level. Let me throw this out there, Jamie. You and I did buy one, uh, uh, not through a local establishment, uh, and I bought another one here after trying it. I bought another one here locally at at about forty-five dollars. So I enjoyed it enough to go back and buy another one. So, I mean, I, I think that by definition has to say that I'm at least satisfied. Um, I'm probably not up to that four like I was on all the other scores. It's nothing I want to go back out and buy a, a, a third and a fourth necessarily right now. But I'd say I'm, I'm a three, three and a half. I, I, this, is a, this is a pretty good value in my mind. It's a, it's a good pour. Agreed. Um... I think, again, this, you know, just kind of the proof is that this, I think, is my fourth bottle. Um, so I, I think if um, to really, I think if it were maybe if you're if you're judging it on that 90 to 100 scale, say if even and even 100, if it were $20 less in that 80 range, I would be, you know, four and a half or a five or something maybe. But when I when I think about it, um, $50 for a 375. Eh, but when I think about buying two of them and spending a hundred, and then what else is out there? 
with the similar stats or maybe less than stats for that price range. Um, then I start to compare that. That's where I start to talk myself into more that it's worth it for me. Um, but I, I'm, I'm in the probably three and a half range all day. Um, if it was a little less, maybe I could go up, but uh, definitely not any less than three and a half for me. Well, let me ask you this. What is a uh, Russell's uh, single barrel going for in your market right now? What, are um, increasing a bit? Yeah, probably uh, 65 before tax. Um, so a lot of them I'm getting at, out the door in that 71 range, 70, 71 range. That certainly factors in, you know, we haven't had a, a single barrel store pick hit here in Kansas, to my knowledge, in a couple years. And the last few that hit, uh, we were uh, still able to pick them up even a year ago for the $40, $39 range. Yeah which was ridiculous. And when you start comparing that sort of prices to this 90, it, 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 it's not as exciting, but as we're right. starting to see even just standard. Yeah, I've seen Russell selling for 80 in places now. So yeah, even in our market, just a regular single barrel, we're in the 60 or so range for, for most new product uh, hitting the stores. Uh, they don't move a whole lot at 60 around here for a, a non store pick. Uh, but you start comparing this at 90 to, uh, like you said, 70 for a for a single barrel that might be a hit, might be a miss, uh, or if it's Camp Nelson, maybe as I described it, maybe that it, it's it's too Camp Nelson or does it has some of those, you know, flavors that we're not used to. Maybe this is maybe this is a really good alternative and a, and a pretty good buy for what you're getting. Yeah, agree. If I'm if I now if I'm getting a a single barrel pick from some from some trusted people that I know have done solid ones. Um, I'm willing to go into that 80 range, and then this kind of loses its value. Um, yeah. But um, you know, I I I could make an argument to myself that I would rather have two of these than a single barrel Russells off the shelf, just out of a a chain liquor store. Um, I think I think I could make that argument. I think I I, I think I'd agree with that. I I, I think that. If you got someone you know has a, a good picker, then I mean the the good Russell's barrels are great, mm -hmm. um, but not that this isn't great. But with the price point, um, and and the price, like I said, the price point's changing. I mean, we were we were spoiled in our market with like he said, forty bucks. Uh, that's a pretty hard comparison to that, especially it was a it was a really good D. Um, but in today's market. Yeah, I, I can't argue with a three and a half. So now, now Ryan, um, do you have any suspicion, insider knowledge, belief that the Whiskey Barons collection is going to continue, and whether that would include a potential batch two of the Saffle? Do you have any? So on that? again, unofficially, officially, I've not heard anything new about a new version or uh, even a new, um, you know, whiskey baron that they're highlighting. Um, but I'm, and I, I don't know that it's even going to be called batch two. Uh, maybe it will be, but I, from what I understand, yeah, they are doing more of it. Like I, it's a, it's officially, um, and I know this because I work at a, work at a liquor store. So it's officially on the allocated, like it's, you can't, we can't get it anymore. Um, but from what I understand, they're all bottling more of it. Again, that's completely unofficial. Um, but and I, again, I don't know if that's going to be batch two or not. Um, my guess is that it's that it will just be you know a second round of batch one. I guess I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And Turkey's the only brand that I have ever seen that will throw a batch one onto every single product that they ever come out yeah, with. All the There's no real indication of a batch. All two the masters well. keeps have the batch rare. one, and the only one that um, they got a second batch was decades. And the rare breeds and, were multiples yeah. over yeah. forever. <laughs> Yeah, they were. They, it seemed like back in the day, like in the early, you know, early '90s, they were changing, you know, every year. Um, and then they kind of hit the lull in the early 2000s, and and then switched again, kind of on us. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know that. The, I I do think though that they've seen a lot of success with Saffle, um, so it would not surprise me if they're going to do another run of it, or uh, you know, whether it'll be batch two or not, I don't know, but. Um, again, I think they've seen a lot of success. Yeah, it's, uh, it, you know, 
they could put it in one of their fancy boxes and I think do pretty well with it. Uh, as a I was, um, I've always kind of said that, and I think I've told Eddie this several times that I was, I was pissed that this, this didn't have a turkey on it. Like I was upset that this was not like this was <laughs> in the whiskey barons line and not a, a wild turkey, a limited release or something. Uh, I felt like it deserves it. Um, I know he worked really hard. At it. He's super proud of it. Yeah, um, so. well, it should should be. It's, it's, yeah. it's definitely uh, one fact. But I didn't want to throw it out. I don't know if people know this, but the um, uh, which you can. I don't know that you guys have written the, the history or not or whatever. But the Russells actually lived in the Saffle House. Um, when when I was in high school, when when me and Bruce were in high school, um, it's a Saffle House is now, uh, which is the house on the on the label, the big mansion. Yeah. Um, it's now a funeral home um, owned by a, a friend that went to high school with Bruce and I. And um, but uh, when we were, I guess, juniors and seniors, they lived in that in the Saffle House um, for almost two years while they were building another house. Um, so yeah. Cool little fun fact. Yeah, d definitely. It appears there's a little tunnel down in the bottom. Corner. Yeah, there was a prohibition tunnels from back in the day, apparently, um, where they were they were running stuff illegally during prohibition through those tunnels. Um, yeah, it's kind of the story. Awesome, awesome. That, that's yeah, definitely that's some cool. info that uh, we would not otherwise. Uh, uh, have here. So thank you for that. So, okay. um, we ready to, we ready to move on to our, to our third four here. Let's I've been do liking it. this one. <laughs> I'm excited. All right. So, uh, Jamie, Ryan, probably Ryan, why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about this bottle of, of Russell's reserve single barrel? Yeah, for sure. Um, I'll think Jamie hinted at it, but I'll show the tag, um, right here. Uh, so this was a pick that I did, um, I guess it's been over a year ago, last August, um, with a local, um, kind of a, call it a boutique whiskey bourbon shop, Justin's House of Bourbon in Lexington, Kentucky. They specialize in vintage and rare whiskey, um, but um, I've become pretty good friends with them and I, full transparency, I, transparency, I work for them now, um, but I, um, I became kind of good friends with them, um, and they, inv they invited me on a barrel pick. Uh, just so happened to be the day uh, the day that we were doing the pick was my uh, girlfriend's birthday at the time, um, and so uh, we had we had been dating for a couple of years, and so that I kind of approached them about hijacking the pick and turning it into a, an engagement uh, proposal uh, type of deal. They were super excited. I was really appreciative that they let me kind of steal the show with that and um so yeah we we uh that was the first barrel pick i had been on um and it was really really cool cool experience so we we tasted barrels all day and then at the end of at the end of the day um popped the question on the front porch at warehouse a right there so um this was one of two barrels we selected that day uh we took this one and then we took a camp nelson uh, or uh, sorry a it was another Kemp Nelson, but it was a, actually it was a, I forgot now, but it was a, I think it might've been a K, uh, but it was, we turned it into a Kentucky spirit. Um, we really liked it, uh, especially after adding some water to it. So yeah, this was one of our two barrels that day. Um, it took forever to be bottled, man. It was almost like an eight month. Like I don't <laughs> think we got them until March. Um, and what's your, year. what'd your tag say on the, Kentucky spirit. Um, this, the Kentucky spirit, we called it, uh, she said, yes. Um, yeah, Justin's house of bourbon. She said, yes. And, um, yeah, a super exciting day. Um, again, it was the first barrel pick I'd been on and shout out to those guys, uh, Justin Sloan, Justin Thompson, um, two kind of, uh, guys from Lexington have been in the bourbon scene for a long time. And, uh, they kind of let me steal the show again. And, uh, yeah, super excited. Well, we're excited to to get to try yeah. this and certainly try it with you, uh, Jamie. You. you have you have a bottle. Cheers, cheers, definitely to that, yeah. uh, Jamie. You have a bottle. You gave me a sample. Uh, I'm kicking myself for the, not not working with you to get get a bottle of this for myself because it's uh, uh, just just sitting here nosing it. It's it's fantastic. It's a great story. 
Um, and that's that's a bit of what this is all about. So I'm assuming you know these these went pretty fast, and and uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're we're seeing these uh, you know pop up on on Instagram feeds of, of people enjoying them. But uh, other than yeah. that, that's that's we're having to enjoy them from afar. Yeah, I'd say it probably lasted a week. Um, maybe not even that. Um, most of the picks there um, don't last long. Um, so I had to, I myself, I had to, you know, I got, I got all I wanted, but I had to make sure that you know, I was taking care of uh, friends and family and people that I knew were going to enjoy it. And uh, I helped Jamie get a bottle. And um, so, yeah, it, it even went too fast for me. Um, to, uh, you know, if I wanted one, I would have to, to go and hunt it down from somebody <laughs> and try to weasel it away from them with a, with a, Hey man, listen to this sappy story. <laughs> Cut me some slack. Don't charge me for it. <laughs> well, give us some specs on this uh, yeah. warehouse floor, whatever, whatever it yeah. is you know about this. Uh, Camp Nelson F, uh, fifth floor. Um, let's see. I think it was uh, yeah, 2018. Um, we picked it in August again. Uh, Camp Nelson F. I believe barrel proof was in the 120 range, from what I remember. Um, this one we um, we took, um, you know, as if you've been on a barrel picket turkey, you know that at the end you kind of take a handful, maybe two, three or four, and put them in a blind, and that's kind of what we did with this. And the other one we just we had it. Um, Joanne Street, who is Eddie Russell's uh, niece, was uh, hanging out with us that day, and she had said, "Man, try it with some water." And we all took her suggestion. We all loved it. We just took the Kentucky spirit right then and there. We didn't even put that in the blind. Um, but yeah, uh, Camp Nelson F, uh, fifth floor. Um, yes. Did you have an age on this one? Uh, yeah, it was. Um, this was young. Um, I'd have to look to tell you now the exact, but it wasn't. I think it was just over eight, which surprised the hell out of me. Um, I'd have to look back through my email, my emails, but. Um, when at the time we picked it, it was uh, just over eight, and then it set for, you know, probably. I, I it didn't set uh, in barrels. It got vatted, I think, for which you know you'll you'll find that most most turkeys do, especially with the new labels that they're putting on the new sticker. They get vatted into a big tank, usually a month or so out, uh, and then so yeah. By the time we we picked it, or but by the time his bottle was almost nine, but yeah, we picked it. It was just over eight. And other than the uh, the Kentucky Spirit pick that you did, were were most of the the choices you had Camp Nelson picks? Yeah, they were. It was pretty. Uh, yeah, it was right at the end where beginning of the year there was you were seeing a lot of K's pop up, and I think the only thing that was um, available that that year were K. Uh, Camp Nelson F and Camp Nelson A, and um, yeah, um, I, I'm pretty sure I'd have to I have to grab the bottle from up there, but I'm pretty sure the the uh, she said yes is a K. Um, yeah, it was pretty uh, uh, not slim pickings, but you know they they've been pretty narrowed in on a couple of warehouses, you know, the last year and a half, two years. Right, right. Well, let's uh let's get into this. Let's, uh, start. Brian off some notes and, and certainly Brian, you know, you are the expert on this bottle. <laughs> it's one I've had to pace myself on because uh, I don't got that much. <laughs> uh, I think what's always stood out to me about this one though, is uh, the amount of fruit that I've gotten. Um, maybe one of the fruitier Russell's picks I've had for me anyway. Um, that's always kind of stood out. Yeah, I get I get straight grape juice on this one. I I get a lot of uh, uh, I get some apricot more sort of the apricot skins. I get plum a little bit more to the plum skin. Um, some general stone fruit. I see the skin because I wrote down straight up dust like <laughs> <laughs> nothing else, just dust. <laughs> It's almost like that little bit dirty plum peel, peach peel. Mm -hmm. I get yeah. a lot of uh, herbalness to this, uh, a lot of green flavors. 
a ride really coming through for me. Uh, but it's it's partnered with a little bit of a little bit of sweetness, but a little bit of um, kind of um, like a light dusting of, of kind of dusty chocolate uh, kind of notes. Um, there's a lot going on on this nose. Like a like a cocoa or like a no more of a more more uh, sweeter than a cocoa, but but a kind of a dusty chocolate. Uh, there's some there's some kind of burnt sugars in there with it as well. Yeah, I also I also wrote down cotton candy and Bard's root beer. Mm. There's a there's a cola note there or or, or in that family. Um, mm. and you might be right on sort of a on a on a root beer root beer note. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I have um which I'll we get to on the taste, but um, because I kind of agree with you guys, but I have some type of like a sort of like a soda that's been flavored with some type of orange or grape or something that's not, you know, like a, a cola, but uh, on the nose, uh, anyway, but some sort of soda that is artificially flavored with some type of fruit or something. There's an effervescence to the nose. Um, uh, it's not a it's not an alcohol burn by any means. It's almost like a I think of it more of like you get it with, you know, a, a fresh glass of like soda water. You just get that effervescence into your mm. nose. And I'm really just getting that. It kind of opens up my nose as I smell this in a really good way. I'm surprised how much this has dissipated since we've I mean, obviously, our videos run pretty long here. We're almost an hour in. And so I'm, I'm, I've definitely been poured since an hour. It's, it's dissipated quite a bit since what I smelled when we first started. Talking about like the ethanol or just like the overall. Just, um, uh, yeah, how saturated it is. Uh, I got, yeah. I got to go, go quite a bit deeper to, to yep. get these, yeah. these notes on it. You guys need some cherry, like some black cherry on that. <laughs> yeah, I could be talking to some type of. Um, Again, like a black cherry, or a, I don't know. It's a darker. It's a darker fruit for sure. To me, it wraps around a little bit of oak, and I almost get some cherry wood uh, note to it. Well, cheers. Cheers, yeah, cheers guys. Got a load of cinnamon on her. <clears throat> yeah, it's got that prickle that we've, I've yeah. come to love with Kent Nelson. Um, again, it's just uh, right there in the front where you're going to get most of the stuff with wild turkey and those. It's that it's that point where someone who's um, not a fan of it or is not experienced with it could be turned off because it does kind of hit you pretty tough. Um, but, you know, I love it. That's why, you know, I've loved it forever. So. Um, How would you describe the mouth feel on this? Super oily. Yeah. I get almost like a, almost waxed to me. It's a very coating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a little thick. Um, uh, what would you call that? Viscous, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, you can kind of see the legs on it are pretty, you know, pretty run pretty long. Um, yeah, it's it's very it's very coating. Well, those caramels are there, uh, almost like a. Um, a caramel syrup with a coffee flavoring, but along with some burnt sugars, some brown sugars, more of those fruit, fruit flavors are, are, are carrying through. I get some more of that Barg's root beer again, but I also get, like I got grape juice on the nose. I get grape soda on the palate. <clears throat> 
Yeah, the, the pallets where I'm picking up, you were guys were talking about is some type of like a, or a, a pallets kind of where I get the the darker cola notes, cherry cola mm-hmm. or you know something like that. Um, we have vanilla cherry coke or something. Um, also reminds me of those um, those little uh, purse candies that your grandma had in church, like the little caramel ones that uh, you just like all all grandmas have in their purse, like keep you quiet in church. I really like that. Uh, are you talking about Werther's? Yeah, Werther's are like, uh, what are those other ones that like are like my grandparents, like Charleston Chews or something? Like some type of like, <laughs> you know I mean? like those things that just get stuck in your teeth and preoccupy you for 30 minutes, uh, but are super caramely. Yeah, there's a lot of that uh, that soda uh, flavor going on. Uh, not quite as effervescent as I got on the nose, but it still has that. And it's a little bit of that prickliness that you described. It reminds me of it, like just a you know old fashioned soda kind of place. You go to, you know, you go to one of those you know 1800s era places, and you you know you you come up to the bar and order some sort of uh, whatever root beer or whatever it is, but that's a little bit more locally produced or something like that but it's just got those yeah. kind of those rich uh earthy flavors to it like that yeah straight up like fountain like a fountain one not out of a, a can or a you know plastic bottle but just right out of the fountain yeah some sweetness picks back up on the on the finish um I started getting a hint of what I think of as like a bubble gummy flavor, uh, but it, it, it stopped short of being quite that sweet with some of those baking spices that take back over and some of those darker fruit, root beer flavors that kind of pick back up. But it it, it, it leans back up towards that uh, kind of that, that sweeter tones there at the end. For On the finish, to me, it transitions almost into like a, like a molasses. It's so thick. And mm-hmm. mouth coating that um, it's sweet, but so thick and oily that, like I said, it reminds me of, like molasses. <clears throat> I think it's a. I definitely get the sweetness on the on the taste and the finish right at the end of the mouth mouth feel, right before I swallow. But I, I don't think it's um, overly sweet. Uh, I think it's pretty balanced. I would say, like you're talking about, Scott, you get you get some of the spices. There's the sweet there at the end. Um, you have some pepper note, some mm-hmm. pepper notes. I think I do think the finish is a, a little short for me. If I was, you know, like if it was going to be perfect, like it's on the medium side, um, not to medium long. Where I think Saffle had a really long finish. Uh, this is sort of medium. Uh, not you know, not that everything has to stick with me for two minutes, but if I had a criticism. Um, have you put them side by in, side? No, I haven't. No. I'm curious now that you said that Saffle's longer. Yeah. Yeah. This does. This definitely doesn't uh, come across as overly sweet. I think where the sweetness comes in is is helping um, create some balance in there. Um, you know, if it were uh, overly dark on the fruits or overly heavy on some of that, uh, those other sort of rich flavors without that sweet to balance it back out. I think it would, I think it would be lacking, but I, I it just, it's got just a, a very well balanced feel from the palate all the way through to the finish. I think you're right. Saffle's got a, got a longer finish. It just goes just, on uh, and on and on. Yeah. It's a, it's a twinge longer. Um, again, not that, I need everything to stick with me, but that is a you know characteristic that I like. So if I was being critical, uh, that's where it does, which we'll get into the scores, but that's where it does kind of fall short for me a little bit. It's just right there at that back end. This this has a um, something that I'm just sort of not used to with the with the, the Russell's picks that I've had before, other than the Camp Nelson. It's got that sort of um, uh, it's the prickliness there on the finish that, that it's just something other than what I would expect from, uh, from the Russells that I've enjoyed for the years prior. Uh, but it, it, it again, it's growing on me. Um, it, it's interesting to see sort of that develop on the palate. It's got the true Camp Nelson like profile, I think, 
Um, again, not something that's super, um, you know, it's, I've had some that are super interesting, like I said, and they're super off profile or whatever off notes, but this one is that classic Camp Nelson. Um, what I've come to come to really like from those barrels, the, that, what that, that, um, those, that set of warehouses, um, what they offer. Um, yeah, it's, uh, are you, are you seeing many of these get proofed down to a Kentucky spirit um, or most of these being held for Russell's? I think most of them are being held from Russell's because I've seen, um, I was just there two weeks ago with another group. And um, I think everything we were tasting was from the fifth and sixth floor. They're all in the 120 proof. And I'm just not finding it. To me, it's a gamble. Like th there have been times where I'm like, man, I was, I'm really worried about how we're going to go down from 123 to 110. I couldn't imagine taking some of them down to 101. Um, you know, which you know, you never know, I guess. Uh, but I guess the the nerd in me is always worried about that. <laughs> like, and we're adding a right. lot of water. Um, but I, I mean, I've obviously I had some that um, you know, with with the other one we picked the same day. Um, I think it was a little lower now. I, I feel like I remember the barrel proof being in the 117 range or something, but still, um, you know, you're taking it down 16 points or whatever. So I'm, I'm finding most of them are coming out as Russell's. Yeah. What do you, what is the, what's the future of the Camp Nelson? I mean, is it, uh, do, do you think that it, it will kind of always remain isolated for some, you know, Russell's Camp Nelson picks? Are they going to develop more products like the Saffle that, um, uh, utilize it and balance it. Um, you know, there's only so much of this you could throw into a standard 101 and maintain right. your profile. Yeah. Um, I think from here on out, it's obviously going to be a staple. I mean, I know we've, we've all heard of the stuff that's coming next year. And um, uh, I, I believe that we'll start seeing some Camp Nelson C, I think is what Eddie has said. Um, I don't believe F and A. Now they might have some that are left over. You know, like I, I know they've been finding uh, some some of the barrels from eight from 20, 2018 on recent picks. Um, mm -hmm. So um, you know, I I, th I think it's going to be a staple. And also too, um, I think we Camp Nelson has been been used more than we've known in the past. Now is sort of the first time where we're seeing it labeled as Camp Nelson. I mean, I know for a fact that there have been stuff that, um, you know, there were some picks that were labeled like Q or there was a warehouse Q, um, which was Camp Nelson. Like it, the, those barrels came from Camp Nelson and then they just did very minimal aging in Q. And um, but then when, the, you know, the I think the I think it comes down to the rep um, that picks what is on the, the tag, mm -hmm. like, you know what I mean? And so. Um, the you still see them some today where they just say F and A, and those are right. Yeah, the early ones uh, were all early ones in 2018 were all called F and A. F and A, and and so they didn't they didn't differentiate with the C N. So I actually think we've probably had Kemp Nelson out there more than we've ever known, and and maybe that's our our biases or whatever um, that are going into saying that there's a difference. Um, you know, you never know. I guess. Um, they obviously they use Camp Nelson uh, Rye in the new Masters Keep. A lot of the Cornerstone, I believe, a lot of the nine, all the nine year was from Camp Nelson in the Rye. Interesting. The Masters Keep Cornerstone. Um, so yeah, I think uh, we'll eventually see some of the other warehouses. I think they have five or six. I think there's six at Camp Nelson. If I'm picturing the layout in my head right. Which Four speaking that of that, <laughs> why, why do they not? Why do they not have a map of all of their warehouses? I don't know. Again, we've, we've <laughs> what nerd does to, not find that cool? Like, I've, if I've I went to Wild to, Turkey, I'd pay five bucks for one. I think it's awesome. Sure. It's like an aerial shot where they're, and I don't, I don't see how that could like, you know, that's not like getting insider information. Um, right. Do an aerial shot, label oh. them like a like an amusement park map. You know, you see those. Yeah. Like I want I want to like, see where the old yeah. crow warehouses are. I want to yeah. see them drawn as the stone they are. Like yeah. I think that'd be neat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I think Camp Nelson is going to be around for from here on out. Um, 
you know, they, they just got uh, introduced you know, in the last few years. And, um, yeah, I think they're here to stay. We'll probably just start seeing the other three or the other four uh, more. Again, I, I'm pretty sure it's Camp Nelson C um, is in the rotation next year, um, along with a lot of the Tyrone ones. Well, let's uh, let's give this some scores, and uh, you know there 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 will be occasions where I'd you know be here live with with the guy who picked it that I'd have some concerns with this, but I'm really enjoying this, and I I I I don't have any concerns with with sharing my thoughts because uh, uh, they're all going to be satisfied or beyond. So, Jamie, what what do you think? You want to start this out? Um. Four, four, three and a half. There's not, it, it's not only, he was talking about it being a little shorter, which it is, but there's also, man, there's a lot of heat on the finish on this one, especially with your very first sip of it, um, which I, I encourage people to take that second sip of Camp Nelson because let it breathe, it gets better. I just took a sip when you said the, or I just finished a sip when you said the heat and you can feel it. Um, but again, it's not like a overwhelming, you know, it's just a, a load of sediment. It's just there. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably a three and a half, four, three and a half. As I kind of compare this to the Saffle or I didn't, I just haven't gone back to it, but my experience there with Saffle, um, this is a really good, single barrel Camp Nelson pick. Uh, but I think it, it falls short a little bit of where that saffle can help with the blending. Uh, but I'm I'm very happy with this. This is a this is a very good pour. Yeah my I've, I've written down three and a half, four, three and a half. Um yep, that's that's right where I'm at. Appreciate the four the couple fours, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd actually give the saffle and uptake on the nose after going back and, and having yeah. that. I don't know. I had a little pour earlier of it um, while in between all this. And, and you, you pour another fresh pour of it, and it is just like uh, candy everything. Lots of sweets on there. J Jamie, I'm going to go back here about three minutes. I'm going to read you some text messages you sent me about WB Saffle. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> tell me credibility here, but. You, yeah, you, back, uh, you know that my problem with it is the fucking is the is the price point. It's uh, and I, I like I said, it's we're spoiled with good turkey, and that's why. If you compare it to other limited editions, it's it's going to rank a lot higher. Now I will say, uh, the, the saffle is a bit of what helped turn me towards an appreciate a better appreciation of Camp Nelson. So I mean, there's a lot of things that that goes out to that, but. Uh, um, I am definitely enjoying this pour. I'm probably a uh, I'm probably a three and a half to four overall on this on this one. Um, like I said, it, it is this is winning me over and is one of the better Camp Nelson picks that that, that I've had. Um, but but a four gets pretty high, so I don't know. I'm I'm in that three and a half four range. I think I'm probably. probably I'm, I I don't remember. Jamie might know just because he. So my my price was obviously skewed because I was getting it at cost. So um, I won't take that. I, if I was ranking it on the on the general sixty five ish range, um, I'm probably a three and a half. Um, and we I was getting them obviously less than that. Um, just because I was on the team and and stuff. So um, you know if I if I was going with that. The price that I got them at maybe a, a slight uptick to a four, but general comparison to to most Russell store picks, I'm in a three and a half. Are you talking um, overall or value? Oh, okay, sorry. Overall, overall, I'm still at a three and a half, probably. Um, I think my, I don't know that I can give the four just for taste that that can carry enough weight to take to overtake the other three and a halves and bump those up. So I'm at a three and a half, but I was talking about value. I, I think I'm there on three and a half on value at 65. 
you know, the other Camp Nelsons that I've uh, had an opportunity to buy, I probably have four or five of them back there. They're all right within that same range on price. Like I said, this is one that I enjoy more. But even comparing it outside the, the Camp Nelson world uh, to the other turkey world or just the world outside of, of turkey altogether, this feels right. Um, it feels like a good purchase. It's still a, a solid, you said, eight, nine year, you know, 110 proof, non-chill filter, just it's just packed with goodness. And, and I'm, I'm not at all disappointed in that buy at all. Yeah, I, I I think I'm agreeing with you guys on the on the nose three to three and a half four three and a half three and a half overall. I'm a four on value on this. Like you said, it just feels right. I mean, I think I've refilled my glass two or three times. <laughs> it's just really good, really easy easy drinking. Even though it is so flavorful, I love it. Yeah, I, mean, I think I'm I know you've, you've, been, you've been drinking it. You've been texting me. Like every time, you're like, hey man, I'm loving this engagement pick, <laughs> which uh, I appreciate. Um, yeah, I'm definitely. Yeah. It's I, I poured a little bit more in my glass, and there is some definite differences in a fresh pour versus the pour that I had sitting there for 45 minutes. Uh, but you know, overall, in the end, you know that that sort of the overall darkness that I get to this pour is something that I really enjoy. And again, the fact that it was, you know, it's it's it was definitely in that eight to nine range. Uh, I don't, don't know that that can give me a full, you know, like bump up or something. But you know, usually I find when I'm something this enjoyable is probably in that ten range um, for a Russell's pick anyway. Um, so the fact that this was a little younger than most, um, especially in the last couple of years, um, you know. Could possibly give it some, uh, you know, value weight or you know, added weight to the value too. So, right, right, right. Well, great job on this. Uh, delighted that uh, that Thank you. You, uh, we're able to share that with the rest of us and and your story as well. And. Uh, it. Definitely a good pour. So uh, thank you. Uh, any any parting thoughts on this whiskey barons collection or? You know, Camp Nelson or these, you know, Russell's picks coming out of there. Or any, anything else you guys like to share? Um, I, I hope that <laughs> I hope that sorry, I hope that they continue with the the whiskey barons, especially if um, you know, they're going to continue down this road. Um, I think they're going to have a. They might have not, you know, they might have screwed the pooch, I guess, with with Saffle. That bar is pretty high. Uh, for me anyway um, so if something came out that was falling in that in that line that wasn't quite up to that I might be a little upset um, again I don't know that they're doing anything official but uh, I hope that they do because it's cool it's a cool little um, you know niche thing that they're that they're doing and especially Lawrenceburg is full of those pre-prohibition distillers that never made it out um, you know those early 1900 distillers that just you know, um, that never made it out of prohibition. And, um, so, you know, they could, they could find some other ways to do it too. And hopefully they do. Um, as far as Camp Nelson, again, I think, um, what we've been seeing has been really good. Um, and I think we'll continue to see those in the rotation might the F and a, the CNF and the CNA might lay off for a little while. Um, and then we might see some of the other ones, uh, pop up. So that'll be exciting. Um, and then Russell's picks in general, um, you know, if, with all the talk of the new where or the warehouses that they're coming next year, some of, you know, those heavy right, hitters from G over the years. H yeah. G, G um, I know it's going to be the first year that they've ever done Russell's picks out of a, like out actual of Tyrone, Tyrone a. a. Yeah. And yeah. he was talking um, about some of those, um, on the, on the upper higher floors. Yeah, being the most closest of the ones, he ever, he, he's ever tasted the the cheesy gold foil. Yeah, most of the ones that um, you know, they have a, a lot because, uh, and it'll be interesting too. What I've always, what Dave kind of talked to me about was, it'll be interesting to see how those um, are because what people don't think about is like the amount of foot traffic that's in that warehouse every day. 
um, they're doing, I don't know, a tour every hour. And so you've got 20 people uh, every <clears throat> hour walking through there. You've got barrel picks two times a day. Right. How many, ounces, see... how many ounces has Eddie dumped on the floor in <laughs> Tiano <Tiendo and A? laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting to see how those A's, um, the A ones turn out. Just I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Um, you know, a lot of those other warehouses are left completely alone until it's time to roll out some barrels or whatever from there. Um, that'll be interesting to see. Um, uh, I'm excited for the future. Um, I've got, you know, that's all I drink is Russell's. That's my daily drinker. I'm brand loyal to a fault, so probably bias in some sort, but uh, <laughs> I'm excited for the future of it. Um, I think it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for the the warehouses that we've been used to seeing over the years that have been some heavy hitters come back. Uh, it'll be good to maybe uh, kind of see how they've stack up to some of these Cam Nelsons. Well, Jamie, any parting thoughts? I think you covered it. Excited for the future of Turkey and appreciate the past of Turkey. That's why we do the 30 days of, in November and we'll hopefully do it again next year, but We'll see. <laughs> yeah, it, it gives me hope that uh, uh, there's more out there. Uh, you know, sometimes Turkey does what Turkey does, and I don't always view them as the most adventurous. Uh, but I think this proves that there is some something new out there, something else on the horizon. And, um, you know, there are product line extensions that I could see being uh, – uh, pretty successful coming from some of these types of products. So uh, fun ones to try and uh, look forward to the future. Thank you all both very much for being here. Uh, Ryan, you want to, you want to give yourself any, any, give yourself any final plug where people might find you out there, either on Instagram or. Um, uh, Instagram and, and Twitter are just uh, at who Rhino W H O Rhino R Y N O. So. Shoot me a message, uh, any of those. I love to talk turkey. Um, so, yeah. Well, Jamie, I'm not letting you give yourself any shout out. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> uh, yeah, but thank you all for joining us. And uh, if you want to read more about uh, the, these products or, or read our, our final reviews, check us out at flightclubict.com. And for, uh, for an hour and 22 minutes in, uh, it's been a great time, guys. Thank you very much. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.